Hey, this is Michael, and I'm going to show you how to get started with Smart SPL. So the first thing we have to do is configure an input device and calibrate an input. So to do that, I'm going to click Input Config. And in this list, I'm going to see all of the devices that Smart can recognize. So if you don't see your device here, or if you see a red NC for not connected in this column, you want to make sure that before you launch Smart, your device is connected, powered on, and recognized by your operating system. I'm going to click the Octa Capture, and when I choose that device, we can see the inputs down here. I'm going to use the first input, so I'm going to disable the ones I don't need, and I'm going to give it a friendly name, which is going to allow me to recognize it on meters and in log files and help me keep inputs straight if I'm using multiple microphones. So I'm going to call this front of house mic. And the next thing we need to do is to calibrate this input. So Smart needs to know what SPL at the microphone produced the voltage level that it's seeing. So in order to do that, I'm going to select it and I'm going to hit calibrate. Now you want to fit your calibrator over your microphone and you want to make sure you get a snug fit and you want to do it very gently because you don't want to have the sudden change in pressure damage the microphone diaphragm. So I'm going to turn my calibrator on. And what we can see is that we're producing a good, healthy level at the preamp. This calibrator is producing a level of 110 dB SPL, and we don't have very much headroom above that, which means that if the show gets much louder than 110, we're going to clip the mic, and we don't want to do that. So what we want to do is turn down the gain on our preamp to give us a healthy amount of headroom for the show. Since I'm using an octa capture, it supports gain tracking, which means I can control the preamp levels directly from this control. But if you're not using a gain tracking device, you can simply turn down the preamp control on your device. So if that's 110 and I leave myself about 24 dB of headroom, that means that if the show gets up to 130 or so, I should still be fine without clipping. And I think that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit calibrate. So we've measured the signal level, and I'm going to tell Smart that my calibrator is producing that signal level by producing 110 dB. Uh, some calibrators are 114, some calibrators are 94. So whatever your calibrator is producing, you want to put that in this box and then hit OK. And now we're calibrated. After calibration is complete, the cal offset value here, 134, tells us the highest SPL that we can measure without clipping the preamp. And again, if you are using a gain tracking interface, you can check this box, which will allow you to adjust the preamp level without throwing off the calibration. So now we can see the main interface of Smart SPL. There's three panes in the main section. There's input metering on top, and there's two SPL history panes that are going to start to populate with a timeline of data as soon as we start logging. On the control bar on the right, we've got our configuration controls and our action controls. And it's kind of set up so that you can start and just work your way down the control bar here and set up everything you need to set up. So we've already configured our input device and calibrated it. So the next thing we're going to do is click log config. And this is where you can enter any details about the event that you want included in the log file and also choose which inputs you want to be logged. So if you have multiple microphones in use, you can choose which ones you want to log as part of that log data. Then you click OK. The next thing we're going to do is configure our meters and our metrics. I'm going to open up the meter config dialog. And the first setting we want to choose here is how many meters we want to see. So I want to see six meters in a grid of three by two. And as soon as I did that, it populated this list here with six meters. And so what I can do is I can come in and choose a metric for each one. I want peak C. Let's do SPL C slow and A slow. Let's do an L A E Q one. And for the last two meters, I want to do some custom metrics. So I'm going to click advanced meter config and I'm going to hit plus and I'm going to do a 15 minute LEQ measurement that's A weighted because that is what today's venue is using as an ordinance. They have a limit that we can't go over 96 dB when measured as an L A E Q 15. So that's going to be my ordinance measurement. And I also want to set up some exposure measurements. So if we want to see how close we're coming to the OSHA permissible exposure levels or the NIOSH recommended exposure levels, we can model those as well. So I'm going to create two more metrics, and I'm going to choose an exposure O 
exposure N. I'm going to click OK. And since I've configured those custom metrics, I can now select them from the drop-down list here. So here's my LAEQ15, and I'm going to do an exposure N. And I can rename these meters too, so I'm going to call this one ordinance, since that's the one that I have to keep an eye on so the band doesn't get fined, and I'm going to call this one exposure. And I want to make sure I'm really clear about where I am with the level ordinance, so I'm going to go into meter color config, and I'm going to choose my LAQ15, and since the limit is 96, I'm going to have the meter turn red at 94, and I want to have it turn yellow at 91. And so now, even if I'm looking out of the corner of my eye, I'm going to get that color change when I'm getting close to the level that I can't exceed. And we also have to log violations. So I'm going to open up alarm config, and we're going to set up an alarm for that microphone to the LAEQ15 metric. And the limit is 96. And it's going to give me a 10 second visual alarm if we hit that limit. So I'm gonna click OK. Up here in the logging pane, it's showing me where that log file that we're about to create is gonna be stored. And so by default, this is gonna be in your documents folder. In the Smart SPL folder, there's a subdirectory called logs. You can change that if you want. And I wanna change from the default interval, I wanna log a data point every second. And so now we're all set, I'm gonna click OK, and we're ready to start logging. So when I click Start Logging, we can see the data starts showing up here on the timeline, and we can see the two panes in action. So the top pane is the overview pane. It's always going to show us the entirety of the logged event, whether that's a live log or whether it's a log file that we've opened up to view. The bottom pane, we can actually zoom in and see a portion of that log in higher detail. And there are a couple ways to do that. One of the ways to do that is to drag this little widget and so now we can see that we're zooming in on a shorter time range here. And I can slide this window back and forth and see different parts of that. I can also come down here to the time range box. And if we want to look at, for example, 30 seconds, I can type in 30 and see 30 seconds of that data. And again, I can move that 30 second window back and forth. And if I put it over here on the right, we're always gonna see the most recent 30 seconds of data. And so this is a configuration that I like to use a lot during the show where I might be looking at the entire timeline up here and maybe the most recent five minutes down here. If I click on the drop downs here, I can choose which metrics I want visible. And since they're configured, they're being logged. So any metric that's configured is being logged into the log file. So all we're choosing here is whether or not we wanna see it. So I wanna look at A slow and C slow. I like to look at the difference between those two curves, which tells me a little bit about how much low frequency energy is in the mix. And I wanna look at my LEQ1, and I wanna look at my LEQ15. And let's also look at C fast, why not? So maybe I want to see thicker traces. So I can go up to options and choose general, and I'm gonna pick a little bit thicker traces, which are a little bit easier to see. So now that we see all these metrics are populating overlaid here on the bottom, and we can see on the top, we have one metric that shows us the entire time range. And I can choose which metric is selected as the master metric by either clicking for the drop down and simply choosing the one I want. Or if you're familiar with how Smart V8 works, you can toggle the order by pressing the Z key. So if we look at the bottom pane, this gold line here at 96, shows us the alarm threshold for the LAEQ15 alarm that we configured. And if I choose the LAEQ15 metric, you'll notice that that metric bar is the same color as the alarm threshold. I can use the plus and minus keys to zoom in and out, and I can use the arrow keys to scroll up and down on that bottom plot. I can add some notes to the log file. So for example, if the doors open, I will do a doors note and we're gonna get a little flag that's timestamped in the log file. And once the opening act takes the stage, I'll do a support note, and then I'll do a headliner note, and an end of show note. So that makes it really easy when you open these log files up later to see what was going on. So if you feel like you need a little more room on the screen, you can click this little triangle and you can hide that input meter, and you can resize these two panes however you think 
is appropriate. I like to use a smaller timeline on top just to let me see the history of the show and help me find spots in the show. And I like to have a nice big secondary plot down here so I can really see what I need to see in more detail. Down here in the bottom are some statistics that tell us about the selected range of the current metric. So if I look at CFAST, it's going to tell me the max value in the selected range. L10 means that 10% of the values recorded were above that level. L90 means that 90% of the values recorded were above this level. And L50 tells us that half of the levels recorded were above this level. So this is sort of an average. You can think of it as an average level for CFAST during this time range. Notice that when I press the Z key and change metrics, those statistics will change along with it. So now let's take a look at the meters. I'm going to hit show meter grid, or you can press the E key on your keyboard. And here's our meters. And I'm going to go ahead and resize this so it's nice and big. There we go. You can also go full screen if you want. And you can drag these meters to an external display. So if I click in the center of any meter, it's going to open up the meter config where I can choose how many meters are on the screen, how they're oriented, and what metrics they're showing me. You'll see that the two meters that we gave custom names to show up here on the top, a nice big value in the middle, and the bottom drop down shows what metric each meter is looking at. And I can actually click this and select a different metric. So if I want to see an LAQ1 here, I can just pick that. Notice that each meter has a max level. And obviously these are at 110 max because that's the level that the calibrator is putting out. And I can clear that if I want and get a more accurate impression of what the max level of the show actually was after we took the calibrator away by clicking clear max levels. And I can also reset the individual max level for any meter by clicking on the little circle. If we look at our LEQ meters here, we see these lines. And the line indicates the status of the LEQ buffer. An LEQ measurement is made by averaging SPL data over a period of time. So for an LEQ1 measurement, that would be one minute of data. And since we've been running this for over a minute, that buffer is full, as indicated by the green line. If we look at the LAEQ15 metric here, what we can see is that buffer is not yet quite full. We've only got about five minutes of data in that buffer. And so once that buffer is full, we'll see the green line extend all the way across. And here's our exposure meter. And the exposure is a dose that models either the NIOSH recommended exposure limit or the OSHA permissible exposure limit. And so it's in percentage. And so once you hit 100%, you've gotten your exposure dosage for the day. And so if I wanna clear the LEQ buffers globally, I can use this clear LEQ buffers button. I can also right click on any meter and reset either the LEQ buffers or the exposure just for that input. So once our event is done, we can hit stop logging. And now we've logged all the SPL data into a text file. And the location of that is right up here. And we can also go to generate report and we can fill out more information about the event and who is running the sound console and the production company and any notes we want. I like to include if there was an ordinance in place at the venue, I like to include that. Hit OK and it'll generate that file for us. We can also come back and look at a file later on by hitting browse, choosing the file. And here we see file from a concert. And because I left myself notes, I can go back and look at exactly what happened at what time and view any metrics I want. 